Okay, so this is uh, an orthographic drawing of the torch design that I was um, looking at. Now, um, you'll notice that I've got dimension lines on. They're in a different color. And I've got the, the main outline of the torch from different views. Now, the main thing you've got to remember with orthographic projection, we're using one called third angle, is you have to lay your work out in the correct order. That means that at the top here, you've got a plan view. So that's what it looks like if you looked at it from above. Here, we've got a front view looking at it from the side. And here, we've got an end-on view. So if I looked at the torch from this left-hand side over here, this is what I would see. They all line up. So the edge of this one here is directly in line with the edge of this one here. The edge here is directly in line with the edge here. And you'll notice there's this pink kind of dotted line through the middle. That's known as the as a center line, and that's showing me, or showing the person looking at it, that these circles that represent the end view are actually all in line as well. So you have to make sure that your work all lines up properly. You can't just put the views anywhere you want on the page. They have to be in line. Okay, so this is the finished version. I'm going to show you some of the techniques now that have allowed me to do this. So before I actually take this one off the screen, you'll notice there's um, obviously I'll show you about the dimensioning. We've got a grid going on, which is to help us line things up. Um, and there are various curves and, and arcs and things that have been used in this design. We've also got different thicknesses of line, different colors of line. So they're the main things we need to be able to work on in order to create this kind of drawing. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to pause the video and I'm going to open up a brand new page for you and talk you through that one. The template I'm going to open is on the portal, okay, on the final designs page. So you'll be able to download it and open the same one yourself. Okay, so here we are. This is the template page open. I know it's my template because if I look at the top here, it says Techsoft A3 Landscape Template. So the first thing I'm going to do so I don't mess my template up is I'm going to save it as something else. So I'm going to go File, Save As, and I'm just going to call this, um, I'm just going to call this Test and save that there. And you'll notice up here at the top now the name has changed, so I've got a new document open. I'm going to bring in a few of my toolbars a bit closer. So um, these are the things that we're going to be using most often. Now, the grid on here has been set up by switching on this feature over here. If I turn the grid off and turn the grid view off, we don't see anything. So this top one allows me to see it. These two underneath show me whether it's working or not. So grid lock means that any point will only lock to these squares that I've got set up. If I go into step lock, I can't see what's going on, but I've got little tiny increments in between these. So if I'm going to zoom in and show you what that actually looks like, so you can see I'm zooming in quite a long way now. These are those individual steps. Okay, so step lock allows me to lock to any of these points, and they're set at sort of two mil or one mil. I think it's one millimeters apart. Okay, grid lock only allows me to to go to the big areas. Now the grid itself, I've set up to look this particular way. So if anything that you want to change, you just open up the grid. Um, I can double click on my grid feature, and here's my window showing me all the information about it. So at the moment, it's set so that I've got 10 millimeters between each of the big spaces and one millimeter between the small spaces. That should be fine for what you want. It's set to an orthographic or orthogonal grid rather than isometric or anything else. And all I've done is I've changed the style. So instead of having dots or crosses, I'm actually using lines. And I've changed the color of my lines to this kind of turquoise color. So it's different to the black lines I draw with. And obviously, if you want to change anything to make it look the way you want to look, that's how you do it. You just double click on that icon there, and you can change them. So I'm going to zoom back out again now, back to the normal size. Now you've got a bit of an idea of what that's like. The second thing to mention before we start is how I've set up the page because you might have to do this yourself, you might have to change them yourself. So you go to Setup, Drawing, and at the moment under Layout, I've got mine set to Standard A3 and Landscape. So if yours is not A3 and Landscape, then it's not going to be any good for printing out on our big printer. The next thing to check on there is the actual scale. Now at the moment, for what I'm drawing, I know that I can fit my torch drawing onto this page at real size. 
So real size is basically one to one. So it's saying that one millimeter actually is one millimeter. If you were drawing something really big, perhaps you're drawing a car or something of that size, you'd want to change the scale. So maybe you'd make your scale something like one to 50. So one millimeter on the page would actually be the same as 50 millimeters in the real world. We're going to leave it on one to one because that works for me. If you find that you're designing something that's too big to fit on the page, then you may need to come in here and change your scale maybe to, to a half size or one to five or something like that. Um, hopefully one to one will be fine unless yours is really big. Okay, so that's how the page works. All our drawing tools that we're going to use are in this left hand palette on the side here and in the same way as double clicking on the ones over here double clicking or holding down on these give me more options so where it says arcs here if I hold down I get a whole series of different ways of drawing arcs and we're going to be using a couple of those in a minute the same with all of these features different ways of drawing lines and so on we're not going to be using all of these we're going to be using a few of the things okay so we're going to get straight into it if I wanted to draw a line anywhere on the page I decide where my starting point is and I click as soon as I click you'll see at the bottom of the screen down here I get a load of information as I move around this is called rubber banding I can see how long that line's going to be because it starts from a zero point so at the moment if I clicked here my line would be 120 millimeters long okay click off it if I draw another one okay this one now is only going to be 60 millimeters long okay once I've got a line there's various things I can do with them I can choose any object by selecting it once I've selected it I can make that thing maybe longer or I can duplicate it make another one of them I can drag it and reposition it on screen somewhere else I can even do things like rotate and revolve them if I want to do okay I'm gonna select all three of these in one go you see that they've gone pink and I'm gonna change some in things to do with my line so instead of having my line as a fine line I'm gonna make it into a thick line now for us probably one millimeter thick is about the one we want to actually be using so as soon as I do that you see the lines have thickened up so I can do that at any point the center lines I would I, I draw on my first drawing that I was showing you what I did there was before I drew my lines I went in chose line and I said I wanted to choose a center line type which is this one which has got long and small dashes okay and again I can change the color of it so I made mine a light pink so it showed up on the page so I wanted to draw a center line to show where the big middle of my picture was I used this kind of technique drawing circles is very uh, similar I'm gonna hold down over here there's lots of ways of drawing circles but if you know how big yours is which hopefully you will or you can guess this second option here using a given center and a radius is a good way of doing things so it's asking me how big does my radius want to be so remember radius is different to diameter so if I wanted a um, a circle that ended up being 60 millimeters in diameter I obviously need to have a 30 millimeter radius so I would set the size click OK now you can see straight away it's still using my dotted line so I'm going to change this back I'm going to go back for a normal line and I'm going to make my line one mil thick so it's the same as these other lines and I'm also going to change the color of it back to black okay now I haven't put my circle anywhere but if my circle was going to go on this center line to show that it lined up with something else I'd decide on which point and I'd simply click if I want to do more of them I'd click again I don't want to do any more so I'm going to press escape that closes my tool down um, it may be that I wanted to put one inside it so if I want to do a second one and this time maybe I'm going to make instead of having a 30 radius I'm going to go for 25 and this time I could locate that one in the center to show that I've got the this could be the, the lens of my torch and this could be the outside uh, cover of it press escape again so that's something we can do um, we sometimes want to put curves in or we want to put arcs in so I'm going to draw a couple of more lines so we'll say potentially instead of having a, a, a corner square on here I want to have a kind of radius on it I'm going to zoom in to show you this in more detail I'm going to move my bits and pieces around so we can see it but there's there's the corner I want to work with so what I can do now is I can choose this feature here which says draw a filleted arc if I choose this one it's saying to me what's the radius I want on this arc 
Now when I drew my torch, I think I used something like a 2mm radius, that was about fine. So I'm going to try that on here and show you. So I choose the size I want it to be, and then you can see that my pointer has turned into a hand. And the hand is saying to me, where do I want to click? Okay, so I'm going to choose this one, and choose this one, and you can see it's put that arc on it for me. It's put that, that radius on the corner. So that's one technique that we can use. Okay, I've got another corner here. I'm going to use a different technique this time. So I'm going to try this one over here, which says basically draw an arc through two points locating the center. So basically, the first thing I need to do is to locate the two end points. So if I want to go from this corner here to this corner here, now you can see that I've got this floating kind of um, cursor. So it doesn't know whether I want to do an arc this way or do an arc that way. So I move it to the point roughly where I think I want it to be click again and that's finished that curve up. The thing is you'll notice this time is that it's left the original line on. So this one's joined the two together. This one's just put a new line in. So I might want to get rid of these corner points. Which brings us to the delete tool. If I choose delete any and click on a line, oops, it's got rid of the whole thing. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to do control Z to undo. I'm going to choose a different delete. This one here deletes parts of objects. So if I now choose the parts that I want to get rid of and click those, I'm left with the curve or the arc that I want and I've got rid of the bits that I don't want. So you're going to use both of these tools. You'll use delete when you're deleting big things and delete part when you want to get rid of small parts after you've constructed things. Okay, so I jump back to um, a drawing I showed you earlier, except I've removed a few of the dimension lines with that um, delete tool. So we're going to put those back again so I can explain how they work. So basically over here, same thing, we hold down our dimensioning tool and we've got our various options of dimensioning. Before we do that, I'm going to actually go into it by double clicking it. And you can see what I've done on, on mine is I've chosen the line colour to be red. And the line itself, if I open it, I've made it 0.4. So it's slightly thinner than the 0.5 lines we've, oh, sorry, the 1 mil lines we've been drawing with. So it stands out as being different to the body of our torch, okay, but it's still significant enough to see it. So I think that's a good idea to set those to red and to 0.4. Okay, back over here, we've got various tools, and you can see, judging by looking at them, hovering over them, that they do roughly different things. So if I want to dimension a line which goes vertically, I'm going to choose this one. And so on my drawing, what I want to be able to do, and you're going to need to do this on yours, is you need to dimension all the sizes that aren't obvious by looking at it. So for instance here, I've got 20, 18 and 122. I know that they add up to 160. I don't need to draw another one from here to here showing that that's 160 because it's the same dimension. But at the moment I don't know the thickness of this one, okay, and I don't know the width of this one. So I'm going to do this distance here first. So I'm going to make sure that I've got my grid lock on because I know grid lock on this one is going to the points. I'm going to click my first point, click my second point, and I'm just going to drag out, and then the last bit, you can see this bit moving, that's where it's going to write the dimension. So I'm going to make that in the center so it's neat, and just click. And it automatically dimensions for me. Because I'm working on a one-to-one -one scale, I don't actually need to um, change the dimensions myself, it already knows them. Okay, I want to do the same thing over here, but this time, instead of doing the vertical, I'm going to do the horizontal. So I'm going to choose anywhere on this line, it doesn't matter, so long as I'm parallel, I'm going to choose those two dimensions, I'm going to drag down, and I'm going to put this somewhere in the middle. Now, you see it doesn't want to lock to the middle. While I'm in the middle of this tool, I can still switch grid lock off, so that I've got a little bit of movement here to make things neat and tidy. So I'm going to go roughly in the middle again. So I've used sort of two spaces on my grid to show me this. Um, the last couple of things I might want to put on. Now this, at the moment this switch, although I've shown that it's 122 from the end and it's 18 wide, I haven't shown um, the position of this in terms of putting it onto here. I don't know what how wide this bit is. So I'm going to this time choose step lock and I'm going to zoom in so I can see it a bit more clearly. Okay, I'm going to go back to my vertical tool and I'm going to choose the first corner there and the second corner there and I'm going to drag out. Now 
I can either put the dimension right in the middle there or I can put it on the outside so I wanted to put it on the outside I could do something like that and click I'm going to leave mine in the middle for now because afterwards I want to do the dimension that goes from this height here to this height here and I want to have room to show them so there I've put that one on as well there's one other thing that we haven't looked at and that was dimension in something that was circular so these ones over here basically we can either dimension the radius or the diameter of them so I'm going to choose and I'm going to go for um, my radius and I'm going to have the radius arrow showing in the center so I'm going to hover over that one my hand changes again and you'll notice it often tells you down the bottom here where it says useful prompts it tells you what to do so I'm looking for a radius so there's one I'm going to click on there there's my line I can pull that out anywhere I want and when I'm happy I click and it's done it for me so remember when I drew one of the example ones I used a radius of 25 if I want to do diameter I could do diameter I don't need to do the outside one because the outside one is already being shown here and if you remember I said these things had to line up which these ones do I'm going to zoom back out again on my toolbar now all that remains to do really is to output this drawing so I can um, put it into publisher or print it off um, what I'm going to do I'm going to might maybe I'll switch my grid off so I can't see it and sometimes you'll see there's gaps left when you turn the grid off you just click on this redraw which looks like a windscreen wiper on a car and it puts everything back in again I'm now ready to export this once I've saved it so I'm going to save then I'm going to go to file and I'm going to choose export file and it's asking me where I want to put it I'm just going to stick it on my desktop for now and there's different types of files you can use JPEGs the most common one that turns it into a photograph and that will go into publisher and things like that without any problem I'm going to give her a name I'm just going to call this one test ortho and when I hit save it'll come up with a box and it wants to know what resolution now there's different resolutions you can choose from but 150 is about middle of the road it's good enough to print and it'll look really nice on the screen so this stands for dots per inch so include that as 150 hit OK and that will basically have saved that as an image file on your computer and you can then insert that into something like publisher in order to print it off obviously if anything's wrong you can go back into this file and you can edit it at any point in time okay good luck